Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Take it away, brother. Thank you. <laughs> no. Actually, I got. I, I do have a wedding anniversary this year because I got married in a leap year on the 29th. So, so yes. Um, but apart from that, today we're going to um, do a little translation of this drawing, which is of Balmain, into painting. Okay, drawing's just a little pencil sketch, um, nothing much in it, but there's enough detail there for us to translate. Um, Unlike a drawing where our brains are captured with the line work of what's happening there, in a painting, when we translate that, primarily we're translating it with tone. Um, your brain will still crave some line work in that, but it will mainly look for tone. If the tones aren't working, the painting will look flat. So do most people here paint? Have we ever had a painting where we fiddle, 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 and it's really good, really good, really good, really crap, really crap, really crap? <laughs> So the other thing that happens is we need a discord between dark, medium and light tone across the picture plane, all right? So we need one of those to be dominant. It can be dominant by occupying a larger surface area or a smaller surface area, but there has to be that discord. It, and when you start fiddling with a painting and it starts to look different, it's usually because you start to create that change and then you even it up by adding too much and it becomes then more of a pattern over an area rather than a painting. So, shall we get started? Now, <clears throat> I've just made a few basic lines here to get things into scale, but only roughly. When I draw, I draw really quite tight and really quite accurate. When I paint, I tend to paint a lot looser, okay? Um, particularly in acrylic, because it just lends itself to doing that. All right? Um, always start with your darks. It's a logical way of working. We've got a white surface area. Even if you've got a toned board, it's generally lighter. So, but particularly when it's light, just start with your darks. Don't draw it. Draw it in in paint. That's as much drawing as you need. Even if you were going to do a detail painting, don't draw it in pencil or charcoal or anything like that. Pencil, the graphite will bleed through the paint, so it's actually a chemical process and it will actually react with the polymers of the paint and you'll get a fine silver line. So steer away from drawing in pencil. Um, if you draw in charcoal, your first layer of painting is going to be dark, like muddied, obviously, because it'll pick up the charcoal. So try and just get into the habit of racing in there with paint. And don't get too tight. All right, This is going to be really quite loose, but we'll see how we go. All right. Any other questions, queries? Now, I just use... Um, Metal camping plates, enamels, and don't wash them. Oh, they're only cheap. You used to be able to just get them from the camping stores. Um, but don't clean them off. Just let the paint build up, build up, and then you can just soak it in a bucket of water and it'll just peel off. So you don't have to scrub it or anything. All right. I know I'm just using water. I'm also using a bit of polymer gloss medium, number seven, and... That just helps with the fluidity of the paint and it also helps with the sheen of the painting on the end, at the end of it. Okay. Now I'm really just sticking to three, well, two reds, two yellows, two blues primarily, but I have got a couple of extras there which we'll talk about as they crop up. Don't worry about the dribbles. You can take a tablet for that, but there's no need. Just let it run. And don't worry about what the object is. I'm primarily just looking at the reference for tone. I'm, I'm not worried about what that's going to be in the end. Although, having said that, I'm still conscious of the colour reference that I'm adding to it. So there's more green in this because it will be a tree in the end. But I'm not trying to paint it as a tree at this point. Mm. 
we've lost one already. That's great. Um, I don't know whether you can pick that up from back there, but don't ever over mix on the palette. See how these are, even the passages of paint are more than one colour. So don't, don't do this. Because if I do this and then put the piece of paint on, can you see how the difference even between that and that? So can you see how even in these smaller passages of, of tone, We've still got an interest. We're still keeping the viewer there for some reason. Um, and all of these are really totally the same. And the beauty of that is it doesn't matter if I then do that in there. It's not going to stick out. It's not going to show. So don't worry uh, about um, the colour reference and the colour sequence at this stage. The other thing is this little bit of raw turquoise here. There's part of this turquoise in there. So at the end, if we want to add things and make things jump and dance. And those of you that have seen my finished paintings which, with quite bright colours on there, you can't just throw bright colour at the end of it as an afterthought. It's not going to work. It has to be in part of the painting. So because that turquoise was used there, it won't matter if somewhere there's raw turquoise. Whereas if that raw turquoise hadn't have been in that, it would just look like an afterthought that you've picked up a tube at random and gone whack. So it's not going to ever work for you. It won't happen overnight. <laughs> but it will happen. Now, just going to... Looking for a decent sort of... Just roughly mapping in what the building is at the moment. Where is it it's um, Darling Street, Balmain. It's the cop shop and the town hall. Oh. It's from the fire station, standing at the fire station, more or less. If anyone knows the area. Ah, uh, well that, <laughs> the building's painted a really strange colour at the moment. So, sorry to the councillor who decided on the colour there. Um, so I'm, I'm conscious of the colours but I'm not worried. I just want it to read as an older building. But at this stage, see how loose we just keep it loose. It will tidy it up at the end, so no, it's not going to be just floating away. But as this side of it's more the focal point of what's happening, we need to. Just push a few colors through there. Still not overly trying to overthink what the shapes are. So that... Oh, a bit of both. The medium's a bit, yeah, the medium's on the plate. The water's what's making it run, but the medium will make it shiny at the end. See how important negative spaces are? Yeah. Your brain will read all sorts of things there later, but you know, just let it happen. And hopefully it'll work.
So whenever we draw or paint, the only reason why we stop that piece of paint or we stop that line or we stop that passage or whatever is because there's been a change in tone, okay? So the only reason why we draw a physical line somewhere is because there's a change in tone. That's why we see things. So when we put a mark on here, the only reason why we change that paint from that bit to the next bit is because there's a change in tone. All right? Now, I'm working so close I'm quite lost in there, but I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, it's like that, and it's slightly different to that other. And again, I just need to punch in these darts because without the darts, that is not going to work. I just don't, I've got a few reference bits and pieces in there that I don't want to lose. I'm conscious that there's a very loose rendition of a car in there and then over here. Almost like watercolour at the minute, but that's okay. Like the colours are Yeah, correct. So if you want to start to bounce those, that's where you place it. Just a little hint of the city out the back here. Fuzz that off in a tip. And I'm painting to the side so you can see. So hopefully, the only danger of that is that sometimes the painting might end up going like this. So you've got to tell me if I start painting crooked. Because <laughs> it will. Image of the building is much lighter, so I'm just going to show a bit of light there and a bit of change here. Now back to the drawing. I oh, very important. Have a look. That's a very good question, actually. So. Um, Direction of the stroke, have a look at this. If we do this, see that makes that lie flat in front of us. If I do this, can you see how we can change that to being the edge of a furrow in a creek bed or anything like that. So that's got nothing to do with, this could be to the edge of a something that was chopped off and going straight down. Can you see that? It's got nothing to do with the colour, the tone, anything. It's got exactly to do with the direction of that. So <coughs> what you need to do is always follow the form of the object. So if the object is like this, follow that solidity. Same as in the drawing, even when you're toning in these trees and that. So there's a tree in, where is it, in here. So when we actually do that, I'll, I'll do it wrong because it'll probably explain a bit better. If we do this... See that doesn't, whereas if we do this, see how your brain change, changes that reading straight away, okay? So direction is very important. Now we've lost a bit of that dance that was in there, but that's okay. We'll put something else there. Only paint, don't get precious. Now, I 
this one I have on from there. We're going to do a tunnel over here. And this one looks to Now, to, so I don't get these crooked. To do your verticals, same as if you're drawing. Use the edge of your page or your board and just, okay? So they'll keep it vertical for you. Um, because perspective of this is very important. So all your verticals are going to be vertical and anything else is going to be heading back towards the vanishing point. But as so long as you've got your verticals vertical, they things won't start to fall over. Well, hopefully they won't. And we can start to suggest the detail here. I'm working on this side because this will be the focal point of the whole painting and this will be more simplified. So we want to draw the eye into these pieces. Can you describe No, the building will dictate that. Now, when you're drawing out there, just pick up your pencil and just cover it to that line, okay? So on here it's this, on there it's the same. It doesn't matter how much bigger or smaller you're drawing that object, the angle will never change. So when you're out there and you're trying to work out where is that or what is that angle, just hold your brush up in front of the building until it turns around, find it, put it on straight away. Doesn't matter whether it's drawing, painting, whatever. That angle will never change. So it's not something you just decide that, well, there, that, that's where it'll be. It, it's already there for you. But that's how you find it. Now, Linus Interruptus is your best friend. The more we can interrupt lines, the better it'll be. When I draw, I don't change things in the landscape, okay? You know, people say, just make a tree bigger or smaller. I don't, but for a, a very particular reason and um, quite often, particularly if I take classes out there, it's much better if you walk around and find a better subject. So for instance here, on this drawing, this, there's a dark tree that breaks over the front of here, okay, which makes it more interesting and just gentler on the eye. So when we do that, um, if we didn't do that, and we just wanted to make this bigger or smaller, and we go, oh, well, we'll just make this tree bigger. All of a sudden, because it was something that was annoying you in the first instance, and you make that bigger, particularly on a big painting like this, you'll come back over here and draw that to the scale of what you change that to. So somewhere else in your picture, you'll get it out of kilter, particularly when it's complex. Because it was something that was annoying you or that was your eye was flicking back to up here, you are naturally annoyed by the object. So don't change it because your eye will flick back to it. Do you follow? So if we, so for instance, if instead of this tree being this big in real life, it was only here, and you went, oh, but I'm, I want it to look this big. So that's fine. Then we draw this over here. Now, this to scale there is that is the same. So when we draw it to there, all of a sudden we go, oh, yeah, but that meets up here. So we've ended up with something out of kilter. And it'll happen subconsciously because it was annoying you. So don't change them. Change them when you're away from the subject, but not while you're there with it all in front of you, if you must. But the better thing to do is walk around the subject and make it improve. You can change it by walking from here to just three, four metres away. You know. So see how once we get a decent tonal jump there, it starts to bounce. And again, we're painting it. 
a lot, lot looser than the drawing is. The drawing is very um, precise. Now, we're going to start getting some of it in and we'll never get there, will we? So this can just continue on that building. And there's, there's a tree there in the way. So I can't see the bottom of that, so I'm not going to invent it. If you can't see something, don't draw it or paint it. Just leave it. Now, I'm working very close, but is it coming together somehow out there? Or is it looking... Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. I can. I forgot about that. So now we've got these here. The other thing is, can you see how once we've got those tones running together, they start to lock into the picture? And is it this, at this point, is it reading as a streetscape? A definite no there. <laughs> you didn't hear the question. Is it reading, starting to read as a streetscape? Um, even though it's so covered in just muck, essentially. But it's controlled muck. Somewhat controlled. So for me, by not worrying about the edges of that, can you see how your brain reads those buildings into it? Okay, whereas if we make them really stiff and structured, you, you lose that painterly feel. You lose that edge to it. We still have to we'll worry about the sky in a minute, because the sky is fairly important to the whole process. So. There's another sign in here which I forgot.
See how much your brain needs? So don't overpaint or overdraw things. See, that's all your brain needed to hopefully turn it into what our brains read. Now, can you see how once we read that as a brain, then automatically we read those as buildings? Yeah. Now, it's not that shape that's giving us buildings. It's that. Do you follow that? So see how before when we're tortured, and these could be anything, but because of that, they're buildings. Not because of this. It's because of the whole process. But the thing is, don't get bogged down with really finicky detail in one area about one thing. The painting is all of that. And what happens when we paint or draw out there, people tend to go, okay, I'll paint the building, then the tree, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. Not looking at it as a whole object. So when I go out there, and notice how when I just attack those darks and just drop them in there, they're not reading as anything, they're part of the picture, do you notice that? Rather than finishing a building or finishing a tree or finishing anything. So it's as if you were going to paint this, okay? Um, how we normally do it, you'd probably draw all of the outside, then make the lid, make the label and do the detail. So when you go to paint something, think of it all as the whole pot of paint. And this is just the lid and then this is... So try and draw all of it together all the time. So it keeps it, it keeps that continuity then. All right? Now, we probably should throw some sky in there and let it run down and destroy the picture. <laughs> hey, fun, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there, yeah. Because see that awning that's there, it's in here. And look, there's another one to come in here. Actually, now that you've mentioned those, I'll put it, put it in, even though they're things to come at the end. I'll just show you. There's an awning here. Okay. And then there is an awning here. Yeah, and that's all you need. So your, your brain will just read it. You don't have to paint anything. I keep saying, don't try and paint anything. As soon as you try and paint it, it won't work. And be very, very careful with the sky. <laughs> I rarely do a blue sky. Now, skies will always fade to the horizon except on those really cloudy days. And this... Ah, uh, that's a good question. It was cobalt teal and the yellow, had yellow light to get that greeny colour. And just with dirt, whatever's on my palette, my palette's looking very dirty, but that's okay. Dirty palette's fine. Ah, uh, I don't know. No, because I do all the darks first. Mm. You know, I just, my brain just works dark. That's why I can't. And the other thing is I try to, if I've painted one piece of paint, I don't go back and fiddle. So we don't paint a sky and put something on top of it. So, for instance, I wouldn't paint all that sky and then put the buildings and that on top of it. Having said that, we are going to put a telegraph pole in here somewhere that's on the drawing and I quite like it because it just gives it a, us a bit of direction and breaks up that sky a bit. But that's okay. Yeah, I don't mind using it watery. It's actually quite thick. I'm using structure, but I just use it this way to get it on there. What I'll do is come back <coughs> in a little while with some quite solid paint to, to render the other parts of it. And yes, we do have to cover every bit of canvas. That's why the big brush sort of helps. <laughs> and we've got tree and that to come over there. So again, don't, <coughs> don't mix a colour to render the sky. See how it's just in patches, but it actually works better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we're not painting a wall. No, we're not house painting, even though it's a house brush. I did a 
portrait demonstration with this brush one day. That was quite amusing. Okay. So I still need, what I haven't done here is this, there's a light side of this tower here. That top angle's wrong at the moment, but that's just in my loose drawing. So we'll just tidy those up a little bit. I don't actually remember what colour the top of this tower is, only that I know it's dark. I think it's just slated some sort. And that it's quite thin relative to the rest of it. Because I know I've had classes and we fight over getting it skinny enough on top. Again, I still want that fairly loose. Well, it's not going to sit with the rest of the drawing. Now, drawing. It's a painting. There goes my brain again. But we're just drawing with the brush, all of it, you know. It's essentially just... So, Linus interrupts us again. Bit of light that's falling on the bottom of there. And this one here. What's wrong with the tree trunk? Oh, it's uh, pews. <laughs> no, I don't know. Now there's a hole there because I don't know what's happening. But it is light on my drawing and it's light building of something. So we'll just pop it in so it's going in and behind there. So that hopefully from back there is that is your eye carrying that? You should always walk back off your picture too, like I'm not doing. <laughs> now, what have I got there? There's another little, there's another car there.
can use this brush if you want. Finger painting. Yeah. Not for any reason. <laughs> and they're both dirty. And, and the palette's really dirty. So I don't know how I keep getting the clean colours. Somebody always asks and I don't know. I don't know. And usually I only paint with one brush. And I... It's just brush mileage, I suppose. Now. Yes. Now I need to... Right. This is down here. And there's a should be a dark under that. So this is at this point we don't really want to get too bogged down with the mishmash of detail on what's happening. Because if we do your brain will start to, it'll just start to tip a different way. Now there was a tree in here that helps with this silhouette. The reason why we can see this building. Let's just tidy that section here. So can you see once we've got the main masses through, the painting you know, sort of resolves itself and the process is then just picking out detail. And how I'm doing that is the places of highest contrast on the drawing. Um, so there was in behind here that that was giving me the silhouette of this when I drew it. And that is I'm gonna make those buildings softer in the back there, which they were. Actually I just want that to run a bit if I can. Okay. It's so tempting to tidy it up really neat but then it'll it won't fit with the rest of the painting. So you've got to always be conscious of the the render of the painting or the hand, I always say, it has to have a consistent hand across the picture plane. Have a step in it. I remember. It's funny. See, the temptation is to just throw that through, but it didn't do that. So, I, I, even for myself, I can't make it up. It's better if it's harder to make things up. See how important negative spaces are. So it's really the negative shapes that are creating the picture, not the the big solid bits. And it, it's all those bits of in between. They're the hardest bits to paint, not the objects. The objects will paint themselves. Let's have a 
the long finger is like this. So actually, now yeah, look at the drawing. How's that like this? Any of them falling over over there because I'm drawing sideways? Not too much? Yeah, and look, real daggy brushes. Don't, you know. Really daggy brushes, not a, not a, not a neat. Because if we use a neat rigger, then we get too fiddly. So, you know, we can still get a line. Look, you can still draw a line. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. We tend to overwork things. And I think these sorts of shapes are much, you know, they're just yummy. Oh, there's another tree there, that's why. Another dark going off the picture. Oh, and we haven't done those telegraph poles yet. Someone told me I drew them wrong. <laughs> These have little things here that people who know the building, because there's always someone goes, that doesn't go like that. <laughs> Even when it's this rough. Now. One of those buildings with nice sandstone detail in it. And you know, and coins at the corner. And Again, seeing breaking that line, don't throw it through and then do the dark. Those broken lines, they just read better. But I would even change one or two of those because then those are a bit even for my my head. Don't like it too predictable. Okay. This probably should be doing more of that from out there. I think I'm painting it two side on. I'm getting it out of kilter a bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Now is it looking like a streetscape? <laughs>
this is where we can, I don't know whether you can pick it up from back there, but if we just add this turquoise into it. Um, can you see how it starts to make all of it dance? It doesn't just improve the bit that you're adding it to, it, it helps the rest of it. No, I should stand in front of it, but then you won't be able to see it. Anyway, that's a good excuse if I make a mistake. And I seem to have gone over all the numbers, so I'm not, <laughs> I don't know what colour I'm supposed to do. I like that disappearing just into there, I don't. Lost and found edges are important, as we all know. There's plenty of lost edges in this. Oh, that's what I've got to do, put that little bit of city a bit lighter in the back there. Even lighter still. They also help give scale as things are going away.
going to try and beef up the edge of this in there and then I'm going to have a look at how that's going together. Oh, and then we need to just put those few poles in. And then we're nearly done. So can we see how just the play of those mixed lumps and shapes are what pulls it together? And it still has hopefully a nice painterly feel to it and it gives you the impression of that street. I know, need to still put that sign in. Somebody remind me before we pull the plug. Um, now this has a little wonderful little crooked... Telegraph pole here. <laughs> See, um, Linus interrupts us again. Once we interrupt things, once we change things, the brain just goes, oh, okay, you know. Hopefully it does. Yeah. Line that fits in there now. Then this is that front end of it.
Second axis, take the wrap tree in behind and then through here. So, can we see how the more we can interrupt things and interrupt that play of shape, the happier your brain is with it. And then just once we get this tonal jumping thing, we just need to suggest detail. Your brain will read all sorts of things into it. But it it's only once we've got that base of um, solid tone underneath with the suggested detail on top that it's going to come forward as it does, hopefully. I'm going to play up a little bit more detail on that right hand end, just at the bottom of the building here. All right, so uh, remember me talking earlier on about the dark, the medium and the light? Have a look at if we cover this up. Can you see how it just doesn't work? Because it's too even. Can you see that? So even as a painting of that part of it, it's not going to work. Even as an abstract, it wouldn't work for exactly the same reasons. See how once we increase that or change, make the change in it, it starts to work better. So can you see in this painting the, the darks and the lights occupy almost the same surface area and the medium occupies a very big area. Can you see that? So once we change that, that's when we start to get those things bouncing and happening. Um, we could, I should walk back and have a look at it. Is it looking all right from back there? That's the main thing. Um, I'm reading okay. If you come forward and have a look, you'll see how sloppy all of it is. But the basic rule is that the silhouettes need to be the right size and the right shape, okay? So even if you're painting loose, they need to be in tone. Don't worry overly too much about the colour, but the, they need to be the right shape and the right scale, okay, to read properly. Otherwise, they're not going to look right. Just going to add another, speaking of scale, just another telegraph pole. A little further down. How are we off for time, Dave? Okay, I'll just finish it. Is that alright? We just keep. No one's complaining? Yeah, I am teaching. Teaching at the Royal Arts Society and also at Artist at Leichhardt. Uh, and then doing some other bits and pieces around the ropes. And we'll be out at the Royal Easter Show for Matisse. Yes. Um, 
It's in the art pavilion, and it, Matisse sponsored the children's and the school's end of the art fair. So we go out there and demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. It's in with all the arts and crafts, so yeah, it's good. We have good fun out there. All right, so can I run back and have a look? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can't see? Oh, I can, I can tip it. Here you are. I'll tip it forward. Is that reading better? Are, they, are the buildings still straight? That's the main thing. They don't, they don't need to be real straight, but, you know. All right. So the main thing is keep it nice and loose. Keep that um, rhythm. I always look for a pattern and a rhythm within a landscape. Even when it's a drawing, you know, a tight drawing, still look for that pattern and a rhythm. And the other thing is if you're not getting a reaction, see how fairly early on in the painting, for me I could see where it was going to I paint all the time. If you're not getting that reaction with your painting, then you need to change the painting somehow at that point. Don't keep playing on thinking, well, I'll just come back to that and change it or I'll just come back. Try and resolve things in, as you go, yeah, in the passage of the painting. Because if you're resolving it as you go, it'll live together as a painting. If you resolve it at the end, it'll look like you've remixed something and stuck it on. Yeah. And it really, it's just shapes linked together. If you let your brain do the work, um, it's much more fun. But for me, that's a nice, exciting, you know, little wobbly painting. And then you paint wobbly like that and they say, oh, it's just because you can't draw. <laughs> Which is always an amusing comment, especially when they haven't seen the drawing it's come from. I'm just going to add this... <laughs> Normally, yeah. normally more than an hour. <laughs> but, um, well, see, I usually paint on site. So I usually actually paint maybe two hours and I get enough down in those two hours to finish it. It would say whether it was a rainy day, a sunny day, a hot day, cold day, morning or afternoon. Um, because it's just, it's just easier to paint on site and draw on site than from a photograph. Because... A photograph, for instance, this nice clump of tree, well, hopefully it reads just as tree, but it could be anything. But in a photograph, it'll just be one flat tone. If you're standing there, you'll read those details and you'll read that information. And when you're painting, what that does is give you the ability to say, oh, well, I'll hone in on that bit to give me that depth of field or to, to give you whatever interest, you know. So you can play up those areas. When, when you're faced with a photograph, it just goes cool, you know. Particularly with um, if there were mountains and things like that in the background, a photograph tends to flatten those, which, whereas if you draw it, you'll draw the tonal passage of them, you know, in bits and pieces. Yeah. Any other questions, queries? How fast is a cheetah run? <laughs> that... Well, that drawing's, <laughs> believe it or not, that's rough. <laughs> and that's why it's only on a daggy bit of paper. And that took half an hour. But that's because I draw all the time. That's, you know, that's 30 years of brush mileage and drawing. And I love drawing, so, you know. But drawing is fairly easy. Um, most of that drawing, you know, for 20 minutes of it, you wouldn't have been able to tell what it was. It's just dots and the occasional line. Um, because I really draw with negative space. So I look at these. I don't worry about the building. Same as when I was painting. I, I take it the same way. So I, I would just draw this and then hopped over here. And what that does, the more complex something is, the easier it is to paint or draw. Because you've got more vertical reference points, you've got more horizontal points. So it's, n it's not harder to draw. It's easier. It just takes longer okay so it's, it's painting and drawing is really just a discipline in observation what we tend to want to do is go oh well that finishes there uh, or you know that must be the corner of the building so we'll put it in even if we can't see it it's a bit like um, 
I wonder if we've got a photo somewhere, actually. Just I need a real photo. Anyone got a photo on them by any chance? A photo of anything, Dave, doesn't matter what it is. Just purely for the exercise. Oh, not that big. <laughs> Just a normal photograph. Scrounge, or even out of a book. Actually, it's past that. As he digs into the newspaper, will do. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, have a look at this. Watch. <laughs> so, I'll just find whatever. And just find a, a normal picture in the car section. Something other than cars. We've done cars today. We don't need, we don't need cars. Okay. <clears throat> It'll probably do. I'll just stand here and read the paper. <laughs> All right, this will do. It doesn't matter for the exercise. You'll get what I mean in the end. So, if I hold that up, what sort of picture of? Sorry? Right. Now, who paints from photographs? Or has painted from photographs? Yeah. So your brain receives, you know, a blurry, nothing sort of bit of information and you could still tell that that was a woman holding a box with a plant in it. Um, so why, when we paint, do we do this? We go, oh, that's what it is, to resolve it. Your brain hasn't needed it. It didn't even need it from that distance. So don't do it. So that's the other reason why I don't use photographs, because people overstate things. Because if I said, now I want you to paint that for me, you go, oh, well I better get this exactly right, and I better get this. And you draw, it's actually a box of fruit, so you draw every piece of round fruit. You can't see it. The reason why it's telling you it's a piece of fruit is that bit, just those two lumps. It's like the car. That's what's telling you that's a building. Okay? So when we face with a photograph, what we tend to do is overstate things and resolve things that we can't see. And that's why painting and drawing is just a discipline in observation. Just look. Look at what we're drawing, not, not draw what we know. You've all heard that before. So I thank you for coming along and I hope you uh, learnt something and had a bit of fun along the way. Thank you. So, very good. No one fell asleep. Actually, the